in the mood to do some jarring. I haven't drawn for, well, I haven't drawn since last year, hey, which um, is actually like last week. When I haven't made art for about a week, I just get this weird feeling inside, I don't know how to explain it, but an itch inside, a desire to draw and make something. So I'm gonna get making. This is the last thing I did, uh, actually the first page of my new sketchbook. I haven't finished my old sketchbook, but I'm just so fed up with it and don't even wanna work in it anymore. Um, so I thought I'd treat myself and just start working in a new sketchbook you know exciting times yeah, i did a bit a little bit of sketching last night for different ideas what to draw i'm really in the mood to draw some vegetables i did think about putting faces on them you can just about see a little face there i might put faces on i'm still not sure but um, i just think it'd be a nice fun little painting to do have some reference pictures up as well to help me out i'm going to keep it quite stylized and cartoony though i think got my gouache here these ones here are my gouache that I've just put into the pans and they've obviously dried out but they still work pretty fine um, and these are my watercolours on this side and these are my watercolours here I'm not sure if I'll get all this painted today but I'd quite like to um, I did another fun little mushroom sketch these ones are going to have faces definitely you can see a lot of pencil marks because I just was really unsure as what to put on this page yeah got there in the end with these little guys and then over here I've got a little mushroom village my go-to drawing when I don't know what to draw I draw a mushroom village I'm a bit obsessed with drawing mushrooms Rooms. I have this painting up here which I did uh, last summer which you can actually buy as a print off my Etsy shop which I really like. Ever since I did this I'm just obsessed with drawing mushrooms now. <laughs> yeah let's get drawing. Painting, drawing, painting, whatever. <laughs> It's face over me now and I actually got a new microphone that I plug into my phone like it plugs directly into my phone which I record most of my videos on now these days um, so all my audio that you just heard was filmed on my new microphone so it sounds really nice now which also makes me quite excited to film more stuff and so there'll probably be a lot more real-time speaking in my videos from now on just because it's so much easier to film nice audio with the new microphone thing I have to plug into my phone anyway that's why the audio sounded so nice just then, but now I've realised it might get a bit confusing because the audio I used to film real time um, was always like a tiny bit echoey because I, was, I wasn't super close to the mic, so you could kind of hear a clear difference between real time speaking and then voiceover speaking because the voiceover always sounded a little bit nicer, but now they kind of sound exactly the same, so I'm worried it might get a bit confusing when I'm doing real time speaking and when I'm doing voiceovers, but hopefully. <laughs> I mean, obviously this is re uh, this is a voiceover because it's sped up, so that's pretty easy to understand. <laughs> anyway, enough about my uh, the quality of my audio. <laughs> because I'm sure that's what everyone wants to know about. Let's talk about the painting. So I was doing some gouache paintings. I hadn't painted for around a week, which is usually about how long it takes for me to just get the art itch back. I just feel like, you know, art is in my bones and I just have to do it. And when I haven't done it for a while, I just don't really feel like, I don't know, I just feel like there's something that I'm missing. I don't know if anyone else gets that feeling. If you do, let me know. It was just so nice to get to painting and play with my gouache a bit more because I'm still quite new to gouache. I only got it, I mean, as I have had it for a while to be honest. I got it quite a few months ago but I haven't done that many paintings with it. And I'm really trying to push my style and get a lot of texture within my painting. So instead of painting just like, this, like the top of these mushrooms now, instead of painting it just kind of solid red, I'm going in with like loads of different shades and just letting, kind of having it be quite patchy. Um, and just show that texture because that's what I love in other people's work when you can see the texture of the paint and I'm trying to kind of try and make that work in my own style and I'm so happy with how these mushrooms turned out. I'll actually pop a picture up on screen of the nice edited Instagram version because I added a little drop shadow and I love it so much.
highlights now the next day. These are some uh, collages that I did for Christmas. Well, this one was for my mum's birthday and the other one was for my dad for Christmas. Yeah, they really like the presents, but uh, my mum went and bought frames for them and I don't know what happened. I think if she ordered the wrong size or if they sent the wrong size, but um, they are too small. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna try and fix them so they fit in these frames. And this one's an easy fix because I can just kind of chop this bit off and then write uh, Dad's Ride at the bottom. This one, not so much, uh, but because it is collage, I'm gonna try and, because I'm not sure, these aren't glued down the best, so I think I'll be able to peel these up pretty easy, chop a bit off, move everything down, which is a shame because I do really like the way this looks, but I think I can fix it and I have pictures of it, you know, so I can remember the way it looks now. So that's my little task for this morning before I get going with my, my big task that I don't want to do today, and so let's just get this done and out of the way. Okay, so here's the aftermath. I've managed to peel off as much as I can and yikes. <laughs> There's still quite a lot stuck to the paper, but this top bit will get cut, cut off anyway, so I think it'll be fine as long as these bits are intact. I only kind of lost one petal that, that ripped in half. There it is, how sad. So I think if I cut it there, then I can move a flower down here. We'll see how it goes. I, I don't think it'll look as good, but at least it'll fit the frame. <laughs> So a few weeks ago I bought this from a little garden centre because it was just so precious and I've been wanting to do something like this for a while and when I saw this I thought this was just perfect. So what it is, it's um, a DIY miniature greenhouse so it's it, everything to make this comes in this kit and you just make a greenhouse and it's going to be very time consuming but I'm really excited to get going with it. I've already started a little bit so in my little box of chocolates, it's not chocolates, it's tiny furniture. <laughs> So these are the bits of furniture that I've already started gluing together and oh this is my favourite bit. Look at that, I mean come on, how cute is that? I love it. So tiny. Now oh, this door will give you a, a kind of an example of how big it will be. So I reckon the finished thing will probably be about, you know, from here to maybe here. So pretty big not too small. I just really want to make it look super cute because I want to put it on my shelf and I don't know, I just think it'll look really nice on my shelf. Um, and I want to go a bit above and beyond because um, like for example, for the flooring, they've just given you like a picture of wood that you stick down, but I don't want a picture of wood. I want actual wood. I bought loads of these little um, like coffee stirrer sticks, which I plan on cutting up and making into, making into actual floorboards. Um, so there's like just little things like that, which I want to kind of add my own little touch to it. I want to kind of paint some of, the, some of the furniture just to make it more personal. Follow the instructions for a lot of it, but kind of doing my own thing as well. But there's so many little bits. I mean, just look at that. Tiny little like trees and so many things. Um, so I'm very excited to get going with this. Obviously I've done quite a bit already, but um, there's still lots and lots and lots to do. I know this isn't the usual thing that I do, but I, I think hopefully you'll enjoy watching this because I love watching this sort of stuff. And this is the first ever miniature I've made, so it probably will be a little bit rough around the edges, but please do not judge. I'm so excited. I mean, just look at that. Come on, it's just a tiny little stool. I love it. I'm going to get making. I'm going to spend all day doing this and slowly chip away at the big long list of things I've got to do to get this to be finished. Okay, let's go. Voiceover's back. So, like I mentioned just a second ago, I really wanted to personalise 
this greenhouse kit to put my own stamp on it because I know quite a lot of people have made this kit just um, watching tutorials on YouTube there's quite a lot of videos of people making this so I, I kind of wanted to you know make it more me I mean the kit itself is already really detailed but I wanted to go even more detailed because I like to put a lot of effort into things and go above and beyond that's just that's just what I do you know it's, it's my brand <laughs> so I decided to paint all the individual bits of furniture for a lot of the kind of wood people all of them I added kind of like a wood sort of grain to them by using like a dry brushing technique and I'm sure there's probably better ways to do it and I'm kind of new to this sort of stuff so I, I kind of just learned as I was going along but I use a dry brush and loads of different shades of brown to add like a wood texture um, and then I also sanded quite a lot of the furniture with these little, I don't know, my dad gave them to me, um, sanding things, um, just to make them look a bit more chips. I want it to have kind of that shabby chic kind of look, like it's, you know, been sitting in a greenhouse for years and years and, you know, slowly sort of decaying. I don't know, I thought it made it look cuter. This little set of drawers I painted green. I, I kind of want the whole greenhouse to, well, be green. I want the, house, the greenhouse to be green. <laughs> There were lots of different shades of green and then maybe red as well. It took me a very long time to paint all these bits of furniture. Very fiddly, but also really fun to do something creative that wasn't my usual type of creativeness. In this video, I obviously didn't get the whole greenhouse finished because that is a very, very big task, which will be done over multiple weeks. But I've, I've got a very big chunk of it done. So in this video, I complete all of the furniture, all of the plants, and basically get all the interior decoration and furniture bits done um, and then my plan is for next week to film all of the creation of the actual greenhouse so hopefully by next week's video it'll be pretty much finished um, although I do have I have my goals set high for this project because I want to also create like a little garden to go alongside it but that'll probably be a job for summer hopefully you're enjoying watching this sort of stuff I know it's not your usual sort of stuff but hopefully it's still fun for you to watch because I love watching people make miniatures I've been watching so many miniature videos lately. My favourite channels are um, one called North of the Border, who makes a lot of the kind of like nerdy related miniatures, and then there's Studs Studson's. I struggle to say this one. Studson's Studio, who is quite similar to North of the Border, to be honest. And then there's Hanny Hanna Hanna Berry Hanna Hanna Berry Berry. I'm also probably saying that one wrong, but they make the cutest little miniatures with these little frog characters, and they're just Oh, they're so precious and I find it so inspiring and I, I really want to get into miniature making but it's just so time consuming and trying to fit it in around illustration as well, it, it's, it doesn't, it's, it's hard but I really want to get into it more. It is the most precious thing on the planet. This morning I made a few little bits and bobs. I made this floor mat, um, little basket. We had to wrap string around it to kind of make it look like a wicker basket. And then this little, I don't know, tray thing. I made all these whilst in a, uh, a little, I was listening to a lecture. Uni started back today, but we've got two weeks of what's just called employability week, where we just do a bunch of lectures some are going to be really really helpful the one this morning it was okay but i could kind of you know just have it on in the background whilst i was doing my other things i've got another two lectures today one i'm gonna make stuff through um and then another one i'll probably give my full attention because i'm really interested in it um, i've also been making notes as the lectures go on but i don't know i haven't really had to make that many notes so far so i can just kind of work at the same time um, i'm getting to like really like all the exciting bits now which is just making all the tiny little bits that go inside this is my next list of things that i want to do. Again, I'm going to make a bunch of things and then paint them all like I did with the furniture, just paint them all in one big chunk. I will get back to some art eventually, uh, probably tomorrow I'll do some art. I want to paint some more mushrooms, believe it or not. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to do more of my greenhouse because I'm really enjoying it. Okay, let's get going. I got my lecture in literally one minute, so I need to go. See ya. Um, yeah, so like I mentioned, uni is back up and started 
but the first two weeks are all online and pretty relaxed so I've got a lot of time to work on my greenhouse and my art and I'm taking full advantage of that time before uni officially starts and we start getting given our briefs because I know as soon as that happens I will be bombarded by work and greenhouse will be no longer so do it now whilst I can. That's what I'm doing, I'm really pushing myself with this because quite a few of the books you, you didn't actually have to make paper for, you just were supposed to glue a block of wood in and like have that be the middle of the book but I was like no 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 I want all my books to have pages and I've set myself the task to write stuff on the pages and make it look like it has been used I haven't done that yet but future me will have to deal with writing in a tiny book at some point you know give it a second and I'll be saying that I want it to have like a full-on working sprinkler system and I want it to have central heating and all this sort of stuff because the amount of detail I'm going in is a little bit a little bit insane but that's that's just how I roll. I'm just so inspired by all these YouTube channels I watch that make really good miniatures. I just I just want to I just want to do one and have it be kind of as good as theirs. But I need to remind myself that these are people who have made many, many miniatures and are kind of professionals at it, so I maybe stop being so hard on myself. But I just I you know, I paid the forty pounds for the set. I'm gonna, you know, do it justice. Um, yeah, I, I didn't mention this, but the, the set cost £40, which is a lot of money, but to be fair, it's kept me entertained for a very long time, and I, I spent my birthday money on it, so why not treat myself to something which I really enjoy? It's still a work in progress, but I'm, I'm really excited about it. It's literally all I've been talking about for the past week. People are probably sick of hearing about it. <laughs> I finished with all the online lectures I have for today and now I'm getting around to editing this for Instagram. I thought I would show you how I edit my pictures um, because I get quite a few questions about it. That's how I take them. I take them with this bright light um, shining down on my desk. I usually like to decorate the area with just random arty bits if I'm kind of showing off my desk. I'll show you my Instagram actually in case you uh, don't know about it or don't, don't follow me. Um, I put a lot of effort into making my feed look nice and I have like loads of stories saved. I do a lot on here, put a lot of effort into it so um, it'll be linked in the description if you want to have a nosy. How do I edit the pictures for my Instagram? That I do as much as I can on my phone um, but obviously my phone can't do everything um, so then I take it into Photoshop and what I'm doing now is I'm cutting out the sketchbook, like I like to separate the art from the background. It doesn't have to be perfect because people are looking at it on a small screen um, and like who's zooming in and really inspecting your Instagram photo. So now I've got that selected while I press is Command J and then if I do this, look I have this as its own layer now. Uh, oh and also you might notice that my background is white but usually on Photoshop this is what it looks like but I like to have it why? Because it helps me see what it will look like on my Instagram feed and I do that by just doing select custom colour and then it is there. I, each picture has its own like sort of like issues to kind of fix um, so I don't use the exact same thing in every single one but I always use the replace colour tool so I got there by going to image, adjustments, replace colour and I use this like 99% of the time when I'm doing um, Instagram posts and it just helps me make the colours look more like they do in real life because I don't know, I just think that looks a bit nicer and if I go um, Command Alt Z I can like do that and flick between the two and I think oh yeah that looks much nicer because before it was just too saturated and it was kind of doing that weird thing where it gets so saturated you can't see the details anymore. Sometimes I will go in again and select just specific areas. Um, specific, Pacific? Did I just say specific? <laughs> So this leaf obviously is quite light in colour, so if I lighten the background it's also going to lighten the leaf and make it look more white, but I don't really want that to happen. And I'm not a Photoshop expert, this is just what has worked for me over the years. Um, and like, there we go, look at that, instantly the leaf looks a lot more bright and I, you know, I wasn't affecting any of the rest of the image, I was just doing that. And I think this is pretty much ready to go, um, but what I do for the final touch is I go to here, which I can get by pressing J. Um, and that gets me like the, what's it called? Spot healing brush tool. I will just go around and get rid of any of like the the marks, like look like my desk is messy so I'll just go and get rid of that. Oh, get on the right layer, that would help. Um, just get rid of all the little imperfections that really don't matter but I just like to get rid of. Probably should clean my desk before I take a picture on top of it. But, um, also my nails look a bit grubby and um, to I do this quite a lot. <laughs> if my hand's in a picture I'll just make my, my hand look a bit nicer because of all like the grubby paint stuck in my nails and stuff. So, you know, get a bit more presentable. <laughs> 
So this first picture is like the original picture, no editing whatsoever. It looks a bit disgusting. <laughs> this is a picture with the editing that I can just do on my phone. Um, and that like takes it quite a long way. You can do a lot with just the in like the built-in editor that comes on your phone. And then we have the final uh, finished edited picture once I included Photoshop. Um, so we compare it to the iPhone edit, just a little bit brighter, just a tweak in a few colors, not back to how bright this was. Just a few little tweaks, so not a massive difference, but I really think it helps. So I need to get this posted onto Instagram now. On Wednesday morning I decided to try and squeeze a painting in before the online talk started so I woke up bright and early and by bright and early I mean I know like half eight which is pretty early for me and started painting I just want to achieve more with my mornings and just get a bit more like personal work done before the day like properly starts I don't know that's just a little goal that I'm trying to set myself so far have I achieved it no but I can keep on trying. Uh, yeah, so for my gouache painting, I I'm trying to be a bit looser with it and not really do a sketch and kind of think of the blocks of colors as shapes. And just like when I look at a landscape, my landscape picture is reference, I'm kind of squinting and trying to paint the shapes rather than the details. Yeah, it was a fun little study and a nice way to start the day. Next, I worked on more plants, obviously, because I'm making a greenhouse. I don't know if you've, you, you've heard or if you're aware, but I am making a greenhouse and it was plant time and I was really excited about this because this was the bit I was most excited to make, the little plants. I love anything green. All my art is green. I love drying nature, I love drying plants. Um, so to make little plants, oh, I was I was buzzing. <laughs> I got very excited in the beginning and to be honest, it, it it took its toll on me. It was very fiddly and very time consuming, but worth it in the end, I think. Um, so these are all the plants I managed to make on Wednesday. I'm, I've made a lot more, but you'll see them in a little bit. I ended up doing my own thing for a lot of the plants because the paper they included in the kit was a little bit too thick. Um, and I just so happened to have access to a lot of tissue paper because of my Etsy shop. So I kind of used that instead. And I, I made up a few plants on my own as well, which you'll see later on. I was having so much fun making them. I just wanted to make my own plants that weren't kind of following the instructions. And now time to do some more painting. As you just saw, I um, moved my uh, desk upwards because I'm just sick of sitting down. I wanna just stand up because I've been sat down so much lately with this uh, making all my greenhouse bits and bobs. Anyway, I'm having a break from greenhouse stuff and I wanna do a painting. I wanna do like a quite a quick, I say quick, but probably won't be quick, landscape in my gouache and I wanna stay really loose. But before I do that, I thought I'd show you all my flowers because I've been making absolutely loads and I've probably filmed about 2% of this process because I, it was just so small and fiddly and hard to film that I just didn't really want to. And I was worried the video was getting long enough as it is. So you probably saw me making like I think these over here a little bit, but I have made a lot since then. So I spent ages coloring tissue paper in to make it different colors and making tiny flowers. It was so delicate, so fiddly, but also look how cute they are. So um, that's all you're gonna see for the greenhouse in this video. I've made all the components and all the furniture that goes inside. Um, so next video, hopefully if you guys are interested in the greenhouse, I'd like to um, show the process of me actually making a greenhouse for all these plants to go inside. Enough about a greenhouse, let's get some painting done. And hopefully it turns out nice, but if it doesn't, uh, at least I had a fun time doing it. So let's go. I was really in the mood to paint a uh, landscape on Friday, mainly because I was watching landscape artists the night before and that program always gets me in the mood to paint a landscape. I actually much prefer landscape artists over portrait artists, even though I was on portrait artists, get more excited to 
paint landscapes and watch landscapes being painted. Anyway, I decided to re stay really loose with this painting and kind of, I didn't really give myself a time limit but I knew in my head that I wanted it to kind of take me around an hour, an hour and a half and that's pretty much how long it took me. I also worked really big with this. I was working A3 which is much bigger than my usual landscape that I paint and I just had it in my head that I wanted to, to stay loose, not put much detail in, focusing mainly on the blocks of colour. Um, it didn't really turn out how I wanted it to turn out and uh, I'm not super happy with the end result. I think it was a really fun process and I'm really happy that I did it because I learned a lot from it but I'm not like crazy about the end result. Um, and I think I achieved the kind of look I wanted earlier on in this video with the little willow tree I painted before. That's kind of more the, the style I want my landscapes to look but I definitely learned a lot from this and I still think it's pretty cute. My mum quite likes it so she can have it. Anyway that brings us to the end of the video. I really hope you've enjoyed watching this and if you've made it to the end thank you because not a lot of people do. I'll be back next week to finish off the greenhouse and have more arty things as well. If you enjoyed press the like button and if you're not subscribe because I make a lot more videos like this and I'm sure you'll enjoy what I make. Okay, bye!